Okay, I'm the last one. Hang in there. Here we go. I'll bring it home for us. I'm Amy Hutchison from George Mason University in the Washington, D.C. metro. And I am here today to talk to you about Chloe that you see here on your screen. As you can see, Chloe is engaged in an activity that involves lots of pieces and an iPad. And what she is, in fact, doing is building a programmable unicorn robot. Yes, that is a thing. So you can see from this picture that she is very engaged in this activity. But what you can't see in this picture is that Chloe has autism spectrum disorder, or autism. So you may at this point be thinking, oh, that makes sense. People with autism are really good at computers and coding. That might be true for some people with autism, like it might be true for some people without autism, but it's not true for Chloe. You see these two pieces on the side of your screen here? Those are supposed to look exactly alike. Clearly they do not. It took 12 tries to get those right. This is really challenging work for Chloe. And that's because it involves some complex computational thinking skills. Computational thinking skills are necessary for learning all kinds of things. They're also really important for becoming good at coding. And together, computational thinking and coding are important because they help us be better consumers of information, they help us to be better producers of information, they help us to participate better in a digital society. Which is why I think that everyone, including students with disabilities, should have the opportunity to learn computational thinking and coding. Yet, students with disabilities are being completely left out of the computer science movement in most cases. Sometimes we see um, privilege being given to students in uh, gifted classrooms, for example. A lot of people, a lot of scholars are now calling coding a new literacy skill and argue that in the near future, if one does not have coding literacy skills, then one is not fully literate because coding is becoming a dominant form of communication. Therefore, we have to think really critically and carefully about who we include in this computer science movement. And as I said before, so far, students with disabilities are being left out. But fortunately, I get to lead a project funded by the National Science Foundation that is aimed at helping elementary teachers uh, teach computer science to students with disabilities. It's not a small ask. We're doing this through uh, design-based research intervention, design-based intervention research, uh, robust model professional development, and universal design for learning. So in design-based intervention research, you implement an intervention, you reflect on your data, and you revise the intervention, and you keep doing it over and over again in short cycles until you reach a desired pedagogical goal. This has turned out to be really good for us that we get lots of do-overs because there's not a clear answer about how to do this, and we're actually messing it up quite a lot, so we're requiring a lot of cycles. Universal Design for Learning is a framework for designing flexible instruction to meet, accommodate the needs of individual learners. So together, through design-based research and universal design for learning, we're slowly making progress toward our goal of including students with disabilities in computer science. It sounds good, right? <laughs> well, it is a good idea, but as I said, we're actually failing a lot and we're finding out from this project that more than anything, we recognize that to create this kind of equity that we want to see, we have to go far beyond just being advocates for this group of students. We have to take action on our beliefs, but we have to be really persistent in taking action on our beliefs and try again every time we fail. So I want to challenge you today that whatever you think about, study, whatever your realm of influence is, they go beyond just being an advocate for the thing and, just, and beyond just taking some action, but that you be a really persistent action taker. This topic came up for me because Chloe is my daughter and I also have an autistic son. And I recognize that kids like them are being left out of a lot of the conversations around computer science. 
And to be completely honest, I kind of understood why. I really didn't imagine that Chloe would ever be able to program this robot. But through a lot of really persistent work on her part and a lot of patience and persistent work on my part, we made it there, and Chloe has begun to program her robot. So I want to leave you with this. People with disabilities have the right to learn computer science so that they can be fully literate and that they can participate in a society in, a society in which coding is a necessary literacy skill or will become one. And um, to create the equity we want to see, we have to be not just advocates, but also persistent action takers. So whatever it is that you do, be an action taker and not an action faker. You should Google that because it's really funny. <laughs>